Becoming, the transition from childhood to womanhood. One night, by the light of the full moon, our young girl awakens from a powerful dream. She has a vision of transformation and begins to believe that she has an important and magical purpose. She's inspired to believe that she will become an entirely different creature. She first believes she'll shapeshift into a deer, so she gets out of bed in the middle of the night and adorns herself with antlers to fit in amongst the deer. She becomes a part of their community, learns their ways and adopts their behaviors, believing that by sunrise she'll magically transform just as her vision had promised. To become a deer. But sunrise comes and her body remains unchanged. The next night she's awakened once again by another compelling vision of transformation. We watch her adorn herself once again as the new creature she believes she's destined to become. To become a chipmunk. And again the next night. To become a flower. And the next. To become a bee. to become a fish. Every night, a new vision, a new creature, and a new way to experience the world as she immerses herself in the role she's playing, an elaborate game of pretend. As we watch her, we celebrate the boundless imagination of a child. To become a bird. to become a spider. To become a wolf. To become a snake. To become a tree. But night after night, the luminescence of the moon continues to fade and her beliefs, once clear and strong, begin to weaken. In the darkness of the new moon, she wraps herself in a yellow blanket and pretends to become the sun, praying for the illumination she saw in her dream, willing herself to shine brightly in the darkness as she tries desperately to hold on to her beliefs. But when sunrise came, it did not lift her spirit. She felt her internal light dissipate instead. Night after night, the anticipation of an extraordinary magical transformation was met with the reality that nothing had changed. And that reality interrupts fantasy like an emerging light shattering the darkness. Now questioning her belief system, her abilities and her identity, she throws herself into the dark and murky waters of despair to live with the monsters. She then confides in her grandmother, sharing each vision and each step of her journey from the past 12 nights. I've lost faith, she says. I don't know who I am, she says. I thought I was special, she says. Her grandmother does not dismiss her dreams or her childlike behavior. Instead, she celebrates and validates the child's imaginative mind. Her teachings insist that visions are incredibly important. There is intent and purpose and meaning deep within the girl's dreams, and one should listen carefully when we are offered these gifts. Her grandmother then asks her to reflect on what those visions showed her. She offers her a strawberry, heart medicine. And as she tucks the girl into bed, she asks her to reflect on what she has learned, both from her visions and from her elaborate game of pretend. To see that those who dwell in darkness are there seeking refuge, so use compassion towards what you find in darkness, within humanity and within yourself. A lesson from the monsters in the darkness. 
to know that your head is your greatest tool and your sharpest weapon. So wield it with grace and thoughtful intention. A lesson from the deer. To gather your resources and be thoughtful and intentional towards the future. A lesson from the chipmunk. To turn towards warmth and light and self-protect in the cold and in the dark. A lesson from the flowers. To entertain multiple points of view. A lesson from the fish. To be aware that you impact everyone you touch. A lesson from the bees. To never lose sight of those most vulnerable, a lesson from the birds. To honor that we are all connected, woven together by the web of life, a lesson from the spiders. To trust and be trusted and to recognize that you're not alone, a lesson from the wolves. To learn to let go and shed what no longer builds you up, a lesson from the snakes. To recognize that others rely on your strength, your grounding, your growth, and your support, a lesson from the trees. To radiate warmth and light to nurture those around you, a lesson from the sun. We slowly begin to realize that these lessons, these ways of understanding the world, these ways of being are expressions of womanhood. When the girl awakens after the 13th night, she explores her body and recognizes that she has indeed changed. And now she's ready to receive the lessons from the humans. These teachings are bestowed by the grandmothers. You are a sacred being. Your blood is sacred. No one has the right to harm you or control you. No one has the right to deny your sanctity. And bearing witness were the fathers and brothers and uncles and grandfathers, the community as a whole, and they all believed. You are the medicine. Becoming the transition from childhood to womanhood is a fantastical story that celebrates my 13-year-old daughter's journey and ceremonial rite of passage into womanhood and thus into her power. Important revelations in this series involve, but are not limited to, the following themes. Our relationships to the natural world and the relevance of imagination, cultural views, attitudes, and communication regarding the physical transitions of the female body, definitions of womanhood, and attitudes towards femininity, and ultimately, the teachings we share with our daughters about what it means to have a female body and how to protect it and how to celebrate it in today's society. With this body of work, I was captivated by the ceremonial rite of passage my daughter experienced when she got her first menstrual period. She was celebrated as sacred. She was recognized, validated, and empowered. Because of this experience, my daughter understands that she has power as a woman, not just the power to give life through her womb, but the power to have influence and agency. And she recognizes that she has the responsibility to play an active role regarding the health and safety of the community. She understands how important it is to be thoughtful and intentional about her impact. She has respect for her body and demands that others respect it too. Empowerment, 
validation, and celebration. That was not how I or any woman I know experienced their first menstrual period. Instead, for most of us, this experience is often negative and embarrassing. Imagine the impact it would have if everyone this age received this kind of validation and empowerment. As an educator, culture bearer, spiritual leader, and activist for the Ojibwe people, bearing witness to my husband's work and its impact on our children was like my third eye being opened. My portraits depict what I now see. Though this work is an entirely fantastical story, what my daughter's transition showed me is that there are healthier ways to honor this important part of a young person's life. As a white woman, I am incredibly grateful that my daughter's Native American culture gave her such a beautiful and meaningful experience. This exhibition is about the powerful impact her experience had on me as her mother and what it showed me about my own cultural experiences. Using this completely imaginative story and imagery, my intention with these portraits is to inspire more intentional and meaningful cultivation of healthy cultural norms and experiences around valuing our bodies, especially with regard to how we express these values to our children. This body of work is a celebration and validation of the feminine in all its forms and in all genders. Nurturance, sensitivity, supportiveness, gentleness, warmth, cooperativeness, expressiveness, humility, empathy, affection, decoration, being emotional, kind, helpful, devoted, and understanding are all traits which have been cited as stereotypically feminine. Some have suggested that feminine traits are contrived and enforced by the patriarchy, which interprets these characteristics only as husband and child focused rather than community or globally focused, thus reinforcing the domesticity of the feminine and ignoring and demeaning the value of feminine leadership styles. This collection of portraits expresses and celebrates the value of femininity, its relevance to the health and well-being of a society, and it elevates its expressions in leadership. Though this exhibition explicitly discusses and portrays the female body, it is essentially proposing that our bodies, meaning every body, male, female, transgender, non-conforming, is sacred. Our blood is sacred, and no one has the right to deny our sanctity. In a world that insists that power, relevance, significance, and worthiness is something you can earn, cultivate, or fight for. I'm proposing that it's something within you, simply because you exist. You are a sacred being.